team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, Ant Hand Dog, and we're back to it. You know how we do it. We have a very special guest on the channel today. Like, what do you go by? What's your, what's your, what's your YouTube? My MO? What's your YouTube, man? It's just at Noria. Noria. We got Noria on the channel. Um, I think this was needed. Yeah, I needed, we needed a women's perspective for this because I was kind of. You know, I feel like I was a little biased in the in the first part because I was kind of to me, I felt like there was no really no dark side. There was no dark side to what the Lakers were doing. I mean, besides the fact that that Magic was diagnosed with HIV, um, you know that people were cheating on their wives. Um, Norm Nixon was kind of jealous of Magic Johnson for for the most part. Other than those three things, I wasn't really seeing too much of a dark side, but. That's what part two is for. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button, and go ahead and write something in the comments. Kind of give me your take on this Showtime error. You know, give me a more, and I, like I said in the first one, I don't really want y'all to just be bashing the Showtime Lakers. That's not really what this is about. This is more or less just kind of just, you know, seeing what they're saying in these videos, and we just kind of give our opinion on it. Great thing about you is, You've, you've you tapped into winning time. If you're not tapped into winning time, tap in right now. But yeah, both of us, we're both we're, we're yeah. both tapped into winning time. So yeah. it's kind of funny to kind of to kind of watch winning time, and then also see like the backlash that the real players give winning time. Yeah. Like the, the way that Magic feel, the way that Jerry like West feel. Like as if feel. it's not true. And then we get videos like this to kind yeah. of be like, this is the real, you know, of, yeah. of, of what really was going on back then. But I can see why it is the dark side because they're. I mean, they. The way basketball was back then is not the way it is now. And I think that that show is kind of portraying it. And I think that's why they don't like it. What do you mean, what do you mean it? it's not, not the way it's it is? It's just different. Like, they, 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 I mean, not to say, like, I mean, obviously in the NBA, everybody parties and does all that. But, like, yeah. the, you know, the, I felt like the priority felt different. Like, when I watch Showtime, I'm like, oh, you know, like, they, it was like a nine to five job. They, they, they play the game and then and then they go party after. Like right now, it feels like for most players in the NBA, like playing the game, winning the game is the priority. Working out, staying fit is a priority. Yeah, like there's yeah. other stuff that comes along with it, but back then it just felt like this is just our job. But like you know, look at all this, all the benefits that come with it. And so yeah. it was like it was a known thing. Like it was a known thing back then that that drugs was a very very yeah. like that bad was crazy. part bad part of '80s basketball. But let's get into this video. We're not about to hold y'all up too much. We're gonna get into this. We got what? It's a 14 minute video. So let's get into it. We got the dark side of Showtime. What the NBA doesn't want you to know, part two. Let's get it. The hero at some point sees the dark side of his true hidden self. The side he's always denied for most of his life. This was that juncture for me. What do you, what do you get from that? Oh, that's Jerry West. Jerry West said that. He says, the hero at some point sees the dark side of his true hidden self. This side he's always denied for most of his life. This is the juncture for me. What do you What do you get from that? Like everybody has like a dark side to themselves and like you end up, you can act like you're, you know, a certain way maybe. And, and I feel like this kind of goes along with how he was in winning time. Yeah. But oh, he, he, he hates it. Yeah. He hates the way he was portrayed in winning time. Yeah. But this is a real quote from him and I feel like. <laughs> but if you are. If you are what you are, you are what you are. Like right, right. But is he just mad that that someone else is portraying that HBO is portraying yeah. him to be this way? And it's an opportunity, maybe, to just and they want to make money to... off of the way I used to act. Like, yeah, he wants to. I mean, I understand though. Like I, you know, everyone wants to tell their own story, like whether or not it's true. Right. Like I, I would want if I had the opportunity to, I would want to tell my own story or, or you know, explain better about who I am, not to have some, you know, show. Yeah, prop try, yeah, 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 so I, I mean, I'm gonna get it. it. But like I said, that quote right there, I feel like it goes right along with his character in Winning Time. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the Los Angeles Better. Lakers. One of the most decorated franchises that the NBA has to offer, with a total of 16 championships to their name. 17. Winning seems to be an inherent part of their culture. However, it's not the only part of their culture as the fame 
and notoriety that comes from playing with the City of Angels can quite easily turn even the purest of angels into demons. With the party, Shit, so the bad. women, and the drugs all being ever present, tempting you at every corner, it would take a man with the moral code of Jesus himself to be able to remain pure in the midst of temptation's sticky web. Or maybe it would simply take no more than a man by the name of A.C. Green, AC whose Green? story is just one of many stories that are to be discussed when it came to what some call the greatest decade in Lakers history. Well, so AC Green, I'm not exactly sure when did AC Green get drafted. Um, I'm not sure exactly when he got drafted, but he definitely wasn't on winning time. He wasn't around in 1970. Was he before or after? Way after, oh. after. So he probably came in like '86 or something. So you ain't gonna know who AC Green is. Okay. Welcome to part two of the shadow side of the Showtime Los Angeles Lakers. The average backcourt man gets about 300 rebounds a season. I'll bet Jerry comes up with at least 500. He's the tallest six foot three inch player I ever saw. He can go right up there with the biggest of them to dunk in the ball. He's a tremendous passer, a deadly shooter from anywhere. Most of all, he has the timing, coordination, and sixth sense to be at the right place at the right time. To those who knew Jerry West for the quick, tough, high flying, explosive guard that he was throughout the 60s and early 70s, that would be an accurate description of the player who would become the icon of the league itself. For those who knew Jerry on a more intimate level, nope. however, the words oddball, lunatic, <laughs> uptight, Divide. and more than anything, perfectionist would be the words used to describe the essence of West. He was such a perfectionist, he has always taken losses very difficult. Losses were harder on Jerry than winning was good for him. Winning was great, but losing was that much worse for Jerry. It was always very, very difficult for him. During his playing career with the Lakers, West was often so wound up and uptight and that merely missing a single shot could put him in an agitated funk for the rest of the game. Bro, there's no way that he's mad about what Winning Time is saying. This is literally exactly what they're, they're, they're literally explaining yeah, exactly the same how, way. And they're, yeah, they're describing him exactly who he is. Like, so, it, well, I mean, yeah. But I, mean, I didn't know that's who he was, though. Yeah. I just, only, only information I knew about Jerry West was Winning Time. Right. And the fact that he came out to him while he wanted to take him to Supreme Court, I thought he was nothing like that. But this is a true story about, you know, what, what went on back then. And it's pretty much explaining right. exactly how it was. I think that's, that's it's hella just, funny. It's, it's a pattern of that's, personality. That's hella funny. His need and desire to be perfect and do everything he could to help his team win on the court was so strong, the West himself said that it would drive him to the depths of depression on a regular basis. <laughs> His strive so for perfection like. was, in a way, debilitating. That, though, mainly took place earlier on in his career. See, as he matured, he had learned to accept the fact that he could not be perfect through the help of women. I would lose myself in women, a lot of women, and I was married. I was bad. Jerry West. Former teammates, coaches, and anyone who was around Jerry enough knew that he had to have the touch of at least one woman before a tip off to the help touch him calm his woman. nerves. <laughs> Similar to Magic Johnson, for someone who refused to drink his milk, women were the only outlet the West could seemingly find. That's his favorite like, at the time it? being airline stewardesses. As even professional athletes from different sports would often try their best to be around West, knowing that wherever he was, the women were sure to follow. However, while women may have helped West calm his nerves and subdue his madness, what Wes fully never grasped the ability to do was lower his expectations for others. As since Wes demanded a certain level of perfection from himself, he demanded an equal level of perfection from others. And that and I think that kind of is the reason why he was the way he was, because to have that mindset to, you know, expect perfection out of yourself and out of your teammates. That's extreme. It's very extreme, but within all that, he felt that way, and they were still one. He went one and eight in the finals. Like he went to the finals nine, nine separate times and lost eight of them. Mm. So that's a that's a that's a lot of disappointment yeah. year in year out. Yeah. So I can see the depression, you know, building up from you wanting to be this perfectionist, but you keep failing at year after year after year. Yeah, like, but you can only help a team so much. I feel like yeah, like if you're a perfectionist, that's great for you. But what about? All the other yeah, right. team players. And, like, if you're still going against the Boston Celtics, who they had at that time, they had uh, Bill Russell, 
They had um, who were some other guys on that Boston team with um, with Bill Russell, but they were the, the Celtics was the legendary team. Like during that time, the '60s and '70s before Magic, right. Boston won everything. Like it was they was they was beating uh, Jerry West every single year in the playoffs. I mean in the finals. So I can I mean I can see it. I can see him being being depressed. You know, trying to be perfect and failing every single year. But not, not even like even just. Even if you were winning, I feel like even if he was winning, he would still be the exact same way he is. Cause that's you think? yeah, that's like a it's like a personality. Kind Let me of know what y'all think. Let me know like, what y'all think. It's I don't think it was a result of him losing that he became this like crazy like because that doesn't really make he's just the way he is. And I feel like even if they were winning, he would still be as. You know, like, come on, let's work harder. You know those people, like, yeah, when you're yeah. like, you're winning it. It's like, no, let's work harder. Let's, you know, we got to keep going. Stop celebrating, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. You might be right. You might be right. Let me know what y'all think, though. Trent of West would carry on throughout the entirety of his playing days and into his coaching day, where he would have his first encounter with a player who would, over the course of his career with the Lakers, would come to know the full depth. Jerry could never uh -oh. understand why his players couldn't go at it with the same ardor and passion that he did. Jack Ramsey. Jerry's just going to have to understand that there are only so many Jerry Wests around. That might be a problem that he'll have. But Van yeah. Bredikoff. Our guards can never seem to get the job done to his satisfaction. Kareem, Kareem Abdul yeah. Bar. Jerry West, as great as he may have been as a player, never should have coached a day in his life. Due to his inability to communicate exactly what it was that he wanted from others, combined with his short temper due to his uptight nature, the locker room for the Lakers was often filled with nothing but obscenities being shouted at the players for the mistakes that they had made. That's Former player for the Lakers, Ron Carter, once told a story of where during his first game with the team as a rookie, Wes was so livid in the halftime locker room that he punched a chalkboard and broke his pinky. Uh. The reason? He didn't think they had gotten Korean the ball enough and were down by a point. Being down by a single point at halftime during the first game of the season was all it took for West to snap. West though meant no harm with his outburst and his players knew all too well the type of person he was, resulting in most of his players holding no hard feelings towards West. The only player that West truly no didn't get along with during his coaching days was all-star guard Norm Nixon. Now just before Magic, there was Norm, who was one of if not the fastest player in the league. Even during the times after Magic Johnson was drafted, Though Magic was considered by all to be the best point guard in the league, Nixon wasn't too far behind. He could play. The problem was, he knew he could play. See, while Jerry West could get mad at anyone and everyone for the lack of affection, he hated very few people and very few things. Matter of fact, the only thing West hated when it came to basketball was losing. People who didn't hate losing as much as he did people who didn't want to win as much as he did, and not the least of which, players who put themselves before the success of the team. Jerry West hated selfish players, and Norm's seemingly inherent selfishness, combined with Jerry's Check expectations being higher for Norm due to the position he played, resulted in a relationship that, that would only bond? worsen yeah. with time, especially uh, once Magic Johnson was added to the mix. Speaking of Magic Johnson though, there would be no showtime without Magic. The dazzling point guard was a wake-up call not just to the Lakers, but for the NBA as a whole. So if y'all had to give me an NBA comparison for Norm Nixon in today's game, who would y'all say? I'm trying to wrap my head around the type of role, the type of uh, play style that Norm Nixon had. Give me somebody that's in the league right now that y'all could kind of be like, you know, he kind of reminds me of Norm Nixon a little bit. Let me know. And seeing as to how there will be no Showtime in LA without Magic, it's only fair to give credit to the person who was credited with the decision of drafting Magic Johnson to the Lakers in the first place. Jack Kent Cook. In Jack part Cook. one of this series, we talked about the owner of the Lakers during the Showtime oh, era, showtime. Jerry Buss, and the pension yeah. for young women that he yeah. had. Now in part two, Dr. we Buss have to discuss yeah. the previous owner, <laughs> Jack Kent Cook. Cook, he was a whose treatment son. of people, women especially, was foul enough that even the coldest of hearts shiver when hearing of his sadistic ways. He was the number one asshole who ever lived. He was totally, absolutely, unbelievably wrapped up in himself and had no respect 
for anyone but himself. That's the worst. Rod Hudley. If That's Jack insane. can't cook what arrives up from his grave today, the event will be seen as the reincarnation of happen? evil. See, Jack can't mm-hmm. cook didn't just purposely go out of his way to belittle people. He went out of his way to belittle them while making them confirm his belittlement. Clay Rothman, the then president of booking for the Los Angeles Lakers, would come to know this side of Cook all too well, as he would regularly call her into his office, berate her in front of at least one other high-powered executive of some kind, make her say that she would never do what it was that she was yelling at her for again, have her do a twirl, comment on her looks for the day, and then send her off. That's crazy. And it wasn't just Rothman that he was like with this, as Cook thought little of women in general. To him, they were mere objects, things to be looked at and then disregarded at I mean, he is His treatment of men whom he saw as beneath him, which was most, wasn't very good either. Whether it be promising a person, like legendary broadcaster Chick Hearn, a little something extra in his check as a Christmas bonus, only to include a wallet-sized picture of himself as that bonus, or telling a staff member at the forum to take off his jacket so he could use it to wrap up his dog, it was made clear that Cook truly did not regard the lives and well-being of others. The worst victim of his wicked ways, however, was his wife, Jeannie Cook, who after more than a decade of putting up with him in a quarrel that resulted in Cook suffering a broken arm, finally escaped from his clutches, only after she attempted to take her own life four times. Jack Kent Cook was a monster. The biggest monster in LA, though, was still without a doubt, cocaine. There was a lot of coke going <laughs> on like in those days. No. Late 70s, early 80s, it was everywhere. Everyone tried it. Anyone who says they didn't is a liar. The ma- so y'all think Magic was lying? Magic said that he didn't. He never drank and he never did any drugs. He was completely sober you know, during this whole 80s, 90s uh, Showtime era. And as much as I want to believe him, because, I mean, I don't feel like he has no reason to lie. Like, I mean, he was still out, out wild and, you know, partying. So, like, what was the point of just take, leaving that out? I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like there's no way he could have avoided it, man. What, what you think? I mean, it doesn't mean I feel like maybe he, like, dabbled a little bit. Like, he tried he it said, But that's what he said. He said he never He's did. never tried that's it. That's what he said. Anything. That's what he, he, never, s- he said he's never drank or never smoked. I mean, but, like, I mean, we all know people that don't do anything. And so, it's maybe it's not as... I don't know too many people that don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. To be that's honest, true. don't don't drink or nothing. Yeah. And, but and it's like, no, nah, nah, I ain't gonna say that. I know people that don't drink, but I don't know people that's in the party scene. That's always that's known to be that's like how funny. Magic was. He was known scene? to be in the party scene. He was known to be at every club with twenty, thirty women, you know, around him. Like, so. But I, do you remember how he did say like he that like basketball is always his priority winning is his priority like when yeah. he's playing but when he's magic he's putting on a show like it's a show for everyone so he's constantly probably yeah, right, thinking right. like oh you know i'm at work right now like you know so no matter how much i'm you know i'm at this event or i'm here or there like i'm gonna like cross my t's and dot my eyes yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah. it's a show it's a, but yeah, it's a business at the end of the but day it's really Ir- Ir- Irvin. Yeah. Irvin, yeah he's Irvin, like behind closed doors but it, it's magic when he's in front of everyone else that's like, true he's probably gonna like be more conscious like about what he's doing that's facts but let me know what y'all think let me know y'all, y'all think that that magic was completely sober because the way they making it seem right here everybody you know was dealing with it everybody had this issue especially in, in los angeles yeah but I mean, let, that, it makes let sense let me, let me know yeah. name spencer haywood is probably a name spencer that haywood. most modern nba fans Shout to Will Harris, man. love however this Shout out to Wood Harris. If you haven't seen episode nine of Winning Time, Wood Harris put on a show, man. Like that was one of he's all he always been one of my favorite actors from Remember the Titans and you know from The Wire. Like he always been this this legendary guy. But the way he played Spencer Haywood in episode nine, that shit was crazy, man. It, it, was, it was fire. Go go check that out. This story is one that almost changed the entire course of Showtime for the worst. Like most players in the eighties. Spencer Haywood used cocaine. As his teammate Michael Cooper, who also used the drug, put it, there's a difference between using cocaine and being used by cocaine. Spencer Haywood was being used by cocaine. Mm. I liked pot because it was organic, but coke wasn't organic at all. It was manufactured, and instead of making me mellow and relaxed, it did the opposite. I would use coke and see bugs, spiders, the most demonic things that ever existed. 
Spencer Haywood. Two pints of Bacardi rum, a good session with a cracked pipe, and finish it off by popping a few quadrules, aka methoqualum, a sedative that Haywood would use to quote, bring him down from his high. That was his ritual. The drinks to relax him, the dope to hype him up, and the qualudes to bring him back down. See, Haywood was yeah. often seen as one of the main guys to go to in the league for a party featuring cocaine. One incident involving such a party took place during a four-team preseason tournament that the Lakers were hosting, when a group of 12 players from different teams all gathered at Hayward's house for a crack session. Except, instead of having a good time and the players leaving afterward, the crack pipe exploded, resulting in a handful of league stop players having shards of glass shot into their eyes and arms. Haywood said that the incident shook the players so much that they had to wait a whole 10 minutes before resuming their session. And as you can probably resuming guess, oh, 10 session. minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow. The substance took a massive toll on his level of play and his relationship with the Lakers, especially his relationship with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Who I was going to say that too. I, everything I was just saying about how hard I felt like it was, you know, for everyone, for people not to be, you know, doing drugs back there. I don't think Kareem was doing it. Kareem was the I'm like the no, only that, one that yeah, wasn't he, yeah. he was he wasn't peer pressured he didn't care about none of that like yeah. and I don't know if it's because he was I think at this time he was like in his 30s so he was just a little bit more mature than everybody else. I think was. Magic was younger. Magic was 19. Ma um, Magic was 19. I don't know how old Spencer Hay was. Spencer Hay might have been the same age as Kareem. Now I don't think about it though, but I definitely don't think Kareem was on that. I think Kareem was the one guy who you know if I had to say was living the perfect life back yeah. then it was Kareem. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I, I, I wasn't there. But if I had to assume, that's kind of how I feel about Kareem. I feel like Kareem, you know, definitely was, what would you say, dotting their eyes and crossing their T's? Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> crossing their T's, dotting their yeah, 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 yeah. Kareem was for sure. He was just here for work. He was just playing basketball. He was supposed to. Right, right. He had already been, like, the three-time NBA MVP. Like, he was, the, he was the best player in the league at this point. So, he, yeah. he definitely held himself to a, a different standard he than did. the, rest, oh, the rest of the team. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Hated Spencer Haywood. Even though Kareem openly admits to having used drugs such as cocaine and heroin during his college days, heroin? he we saw what the drugs were doing to Haywood and how they were affecting the team as wow. a whole. The worst incident coming during the playoffs. As despite the fact that Haywood and the Lakers were scheduled to have an 8 o'clock practice in the morning, Haywood found himself up at 3 o'clock in the morning smoking crack. Realizing that he needed to come down from his high before practice started, he began, of course, popping Quailu. And by the time practice did start, Haywood was still so messed up that he fell asleep at practice as soon as he arrived. Realizing what was going on, the head coach of the Lakers, Paul West, had mm. instructed Haywood to head home. His time with the Lakers had come to an end. Mm. Infuriated by being let go by the Lakers, Haywood then decided he would take his frustrations out on his head coach. As he phoned up a buddy who dabbled in organized crime in Detroit. So wait, is this Haywood like, was complete? Is this in, uh, kind of like detailing the end of the last episode we watched? Like when he, when Kareem, they kind of like voted him off, and mm -hmm. then he goes to that guy's door, and he's like, "Do you still have guns?" Right, like right. That? I yeah. Yeah. Chill, oh, so chill the, it. we can't. We ain't gonna give it away. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, is this? I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, sure everything's is. dramatized and stuff, but like, is this, but the basis, um, yeah. That's, that's why I think. That's why I think it's good for us to watch this because this is giving us the the true facts. Yeah. So that we can kind of see, you know, what was really real when we watched the show, and then kind of see what was dramatized too. But for the most part, the show, man, the show is pretty accurate to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, that definitely the show was my first impression on, on all that stuff. Yeah. It was my first impression, but now I'm watching this type of stuff. Like I said, like it don't seem far off. But like in the show, it's funny because like maybe the show watered it down a bit because in that in that scene, I don't think they were partying, but they were celebrating something. Remember they were like at the forum club, they were all just kind of hanging around. They're like, oh, Kareem, like Cap, we have a problem. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Hay was in the back, something. So that was in a celebratory or a more like, like relaxed environment, whereas what they're insinuating in this video is what really happened was they were at practice so yeah, if anything the, the show kind of like watered it down maybe at least seem like at least he was just partying right, like he was right, supposed right. to be partying but no, who it, knows if this is true or yeah was, I was like, this, this could even yeah, be dramatized yeah, we like know. we don't really know the true facts and that's where y'all come in yeah i always say we got a job well i always say i got a job but for this video we got a job yeah our job is to literally react to what we see in this video Y'all job is to give me more information that we don't see in this video. So yeah, if y'all know the real facts 
and be like, no, what they just said in this video is is dramatized too. This is this is false. This is what really happened. This is what I, that's what I want y'all for. So let me know. Lee determined to take the life of his former head coach. Tim they were going Tim. to do the job for free for the sake of friendship and the prestige of having done a favor for old Spencer. He's trying to get him off. Spencer Haywood. The plan was foolproof, Spencer thought. His buddies would sneak into Westhead's driveway, cut the brakes on his car, so the next time he was driving down the long, winding road he lived on, bang, his life would end in a tragic car crash. No one the wiser that it was set up by Spencer Haywood. Spencer Everything Haywood. in place. His friends had already flown in from Detroit, and they resolved to commit the crime had not wavered. Paul Westhead was going to die. But get this, mere minutes before the operation was set into place, Haywood received a call from his mother who told him that she had a terrible dream that he was going to kill someone and said that if she ever had any suspicions he was involved in such a thing, that she would personally turn him into the police herself. Mm. Upon hearing this, Haywood called the operation off, sparing the life of the man who would coach Magic Johnson and the Showtime Lakers to their first ever NBA championship. That's crazy. That though is actually going to wrap up part two of the shadow side of the Showtime Los Angeles Lakers. Now, this team is so big. I mean, they span over a decade. There's no way that I could get every bit of information and tell every story in just two videos. So if you guys want to see a part three of the future, make sure that you first like this video to let me know that you want to see that, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that video, plus many, 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 many more more videos shut exactly way to way to give us some good videos man that was a great part two um you have any final thoughts on on that it wasn't that really, that really wasn't too much about magic and then that was kind of revolving around yeah. jerry west and kind of spencer haywood but that was crazy but now i'm even more curious like what's the truth what's, what, what's the truth yeah what, what's the truth now like yeah. there's so many stories so and many like stories. it's just interesting to hear all the takes from so like what what's what's the truth like, do y'all know the truth do you know it so yeah let me know how y'all feel about it i guess i'm not really too concerned about what's true or not i just kind of want to see what how y'all feel about the situation you know because who really knows what the truth is I feel like it's too hard. I guess Spencer Haywood knows the truth. Yeah, he knows the truth. Uh, I guess he knows. They all it. know the truth. They're probably at home laughing like, oh. Right, 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 right. But I kind of want to see what everybody's opinion is of this. So that's kind of more important to me. But I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't already. Make sure y'all like this video. If y'all like this video, go ahead and write something in the comments. Write if you want to see Noor on the channel more. Let me know. Let me know. I feel like this was great to kind of get a perspective of from me and from her. You know, you get two different perspectives of this whole, you know, Showtime era, especially for something that you, you you understand, you know about. I think I think it I think it worked well. So let me know if y'all want to see more of her. Um, I appreciate y'all like always, and I'll see y'all soon, man. We out.